Well, it looks like the Note series has gotten the final nail in the coffin, or at least I think so, because of the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Hey guys, Tito James here, and I just wanna be clear, this is not gonna be super in-depth because we were only able to play with the Ultra and the rest of the S series line in a very controlled environment for a short period of time. But I wanna share my thoughts with you guys about the cream of the crop for the S series. And let's get this out of the way from the get-go. The Ultra now has an embedded S Pen that's supposedly their most responsive one yet with a latency of 2.8 milliseconds, if I remember correctly. But all I know is it was really nice to use with a short time I was able to try it out. And yes, most likely no more Note ever. Anyway, before we get to the rest of the phone, of course, let's get to the pricing of the Galaxy S22 Ultra. So here you go, these are the prices for this device and its different variants. I can practically feel you guys wincing and I think there's even some of you scrolling down to do a price check on your kidneys. But yes, these are the prices for the phone. Feel free to pause this video if you need a longer look. Of course, like most, if not all flagships, I really recommend that you get this with your preferred telco postpaid plan. I think that's the move to make, unless of course you have a lot of spare cash lying around. But anyway, let's finally talk about the Ultra. So I mostly had the burgundy colorway with me, but the phone is also available in the staple phantom white and black. Plus we also have a green one too that you saw in the thumbnail, but the burgundy looks so good. It looks like a glass of red wine. Now compared to the S21 series, Samsung also says that the frame is 10% more durable because of armor aluminum and the back is 12.5% tougher because of Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. It also has an IPX68 rating for water and dust resistance. Of course, we're gonna take that at face value for now. I'm pretty sure that Jerry Rig Everything is gonna run his usual torture test to see what the durability is like on the smartphone and make all of us cringe. But yeah, hopefully it passes with flying colors. Anyway, if you'd notice, Samsung also took a very minimal approach to the camera array this year. I really, really like it. I think they call it their floating cameras. And yeah, I like the total 180 from the really gigantic design that we had last year to just these. It looks absolutely fantastic in my book. By the way, don't worry, they're also protected by Gorilla Glass DX, so that should protect it from your usual wear and tear. While we're here, we might as well talk about the cameras already and give you a quick tour of its features. On the Ultra, we're getting a 108 megapixel wide angle camera, that's the main, a 12 megapixel ultra wide, and two telephoto cameras, both at 10 megapixels with one having 10x optical zoom. I think this is the one that can go up to 100 times space zoom, and the other one has 3x optical zoom. Now all of these cameras have OIS except for the ultra wide. So here's a super quick tour of the camera features and me going through all the various ranges, but you're only seeing the table, so I'm sorry about that. Again, very controlled environment. Now for the video, yes, Super Steady is still there, but in terms of resolution, it can shoot up to 8K 24P, but with Super Steady on, it limits it to 1080. Now, of course, you still have all the modes that we saw last year, so in regards to that, really nothing new. Like I said, we were in a controlled environment when we got to experience these phones, so here are a handful of sample images. You'll have to wait for the full review to see what these cameras are really capable of. Of course, we shouldn't forget about the selfie camera and the Ultra has one at 40 megapixels. And here are a couple of samples from the front cameras. Hey guys, so here's a quick sample from the S22 Ultra shooting in 4K 60. What do you think of the footage so far? Let me just move around to see how stable the footage is, how the exposure adjusts. Uh, we'll do some back to shots. You really don't wanna do this, but in case you know it happens that's what it looks like if you're backlit just don't do it trust me but yeah walking around again see what the footage is like if it's going to be stable again shooting at 4k 60. okay so switching over to the rear cameras i'm actually shooting at 8k 24p what do you think of that crisp crisp footage don't know if it's going to translate well in my 4k video but I am shooting at 8K 24P 
in this segment of the video. I'm gonna switch over to 4K 60. All right, so here we go, 4K 60. This is what it looks like I'm walking around the Samsung pantry by myself. Very, very clear from people. Very, very, very safe. But you know, don't wanna keep my mask on but end, but there you go. That's what it looks like. 4K 60 on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. And then now we're shooting wide so you can see what that's like. It looks pretty stable to me. Uh, I'm gonna have to bring this to the computer to see if it is as stable as I think it is. That, yeah, it does look really nice. I, uh, the, the S22 Ultra does have uh, OIS, so that should help with like at least the micro jitters from my hand. But yeah, spinning around to see the rest of the empty, empty pantry. There you go, 4K60 using the wide angle camera. I'm curious to know what you guys think about the photo so far. Let me know in the comment section. Now let's talk about the screen. It's at 6.8 inches and they're using the same beloved dynamic AMOLED 2X panel on the Ultra at QHD plus resolution. So no surprises here really. It looks as good as ever with the fast refresh rate. Samsung really took the if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality here. And I can't fault them for that. They have some of the best display tech in the game. Okay, so now let's move on to the processor. Unfortunately, like the S22 and S22 Plus, as of recording this video, I can't verify if we're getting the Snapdragon version of this device or the Exynos 2200. Now, I am curious about the performance of Exynos this time around though. So, while well, there's a part of me that wishes for the Snapdragon since I know a lot of you probably prefer that, for selfish reasons, I do want the Exynos 2200. Different RAM and ROM configurations for the Ultra, of course, depending on the price tag, but it tops out at 12 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. Now, for the battery, the capacity of the Ultra is at 5,000 milliamp hours, and hallelujah, they finally ramped up their charging speeds. It's now at 45 watts, so it's still not the fastest on the block, but faster than we're used to seeing from the brand. So that's pretty much the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra in a nutshell. I really can't wait to test drive this device out in the real world and see what it's made of. It made a very good first impression on me though. It looks so good. The minimalist design and the color choices are fantastic. The added S Pen support makes sense for Samsung since basically you now have the S series and the foldables instead of the Note. Now it's too soon for me to judge the cameras and overall performance, but the little changes, especially the speedier charging, is a huge plus. Now of course, depending on the variant that you get, the prices can get really steep, so I wanna see personally if the base model can hack it for my typical use case, since I think that sits in a more comfortable price range for me. So there you go, guys. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, sub to the channel, and make sure you hit that notification bell if you have any questions or I missed something, leave it down below and I'll try my best to get to them as soon as I can. For all the latest in tech, head to unbox.ph plus follow us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and listen to our podcast on Spotify. My name is Tito James. Peace, God bless. See you guys next time. And of course, stay safe.